It's time now for Call of the Wild, the official weekly coaches show of the Wenatchee Wild. Stay up to date with your team all season long with Call of the Wild. With head coach and GM Bliss Littler, here's the voice of your Wenatchee Wild, Arch Ecker. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Call of the Wild, your weekly Wenatchee Wild coaches show. I'm Arch Ecker along with Wenatchee Wild head coach and GM Bliss Littler. This last weekend it was kind of nice to have back-to-back home games. It's not something that's happened a lot yet this season. The second half of the season will have the, uh, the benefit of being able to see that maybe a few more times. But uh, a couple of games which came on the heels of the rarity of having a game canceled or postponed at any rate with Powell River being unable to get here with bus troubles. So the guys had nine days off, hit the ice on Friday night against West Kelowna, and they look more or less like a like a caged bear that had been kind of set free. <clears throat> well, we had a lot of pucks bounce our way that night, but um, we worked hard, uh, good effort all the way around, and and um, you know, obviously we talked before the game that we were a little concerned with playing so many games in that uh, I think it was 12 games in 22 days, uh, and then having a nine-day break. That um, we're a little concerned about the rust, but. Uh, that didn't appear to be a problem. One of the things that had to be kind of, at least maybe in the back of your mind, is a hidden blessing. You talk about when you have those concentration of games in a small window, it doesn't give you the opportunity to work on certain aspects of your game in practice because you just don't have the time. All of a sudden, time wasn't an issue anymore. You had plenty of time to try to get to some of those areas that had maybe been lacking. Yeah, we, we definitely had a good week of practice. Um, it was a hard week of practice. Uh, but we're, we're at home, so we got two good off-ice uh, workouts in. And then we had, uh, really, we had four solid practices, and we had two days off. So um, got a little rest that, that definitely helped. We had a good skate that uh, sometimes a, a, a good old-fashioned hard skate uh, brings the team a little bit closer together. And then a little bit of time off, some team-building issues um, that, uh, that we dealt with. and. Um, Really just a little bit of a break, and then Monday we really got after it. So um, it appeared to pay off on the weekend. You know, when you brought Jasper Weatherby into Wenatchee, I think you probably saw forward to expect that he was going to be a two-year guy, and you are going to watch him develop, and obviously we saw him take a little bit of a back seat behind all of the talent in last year's club. And I think we probably expected him to develop some this year, but could you have projected how – far he's come in such a short time. Well, Arch, if we could, we you and me would be over buying the, those lottery tickets, picking the numbers. So. Right. No, you know, we again, sometimes, you, again, we, we knew that he would be one of our offensive leaders, and, you know, he's such a humble kid with, with great character that uh, that along with his work, his work ethic and skill that he has is a pretty good combination. But, um, yeah, I don't think anyone that could, could say they – they saw the, the offense that he was going to bring um, at this point. One of the things you've talked about is wanting to be able to play from ahead instead of behind. Both games this weekend, it was Jasper Weather who scored the first goal in each of those nights, but gave you a couple of nights opportunity to try to play with a lead. And, and how did that feel from a coaching standpoint, and how did the guys react to it? Well, we did a little better job with it Friday night than we did Saturday. Um, uh, again, it, it's I think it's a, a really good trait that this group, they really don't get too down. Um, <clears throat> we get down a goal or two early, uh, and they seem to find a way to get back in it and, and to can battle and compete. But yet I know as a, as a coach that you don't want to make a habit of having to come from behind. That Generally playing catch-up hockey is playing losing hockey. So... You, 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 that first goal is important, and especially in this building, you get the first one, you get out to a two-goal lead, that third one comes, and and then it's generally pretty tough to come back in this building. But um, Friday felt really good. Saturday, uh, I think, was more of a style of play issue than, than anything. A.J. Vanderbeck, another guy, had a pretty good weekend. <laughs> And we know that he's got a hard shot, and we understand that he's a veteran that's been around for quite a while, but there's something about his game that's it's just a little different. It's kind of hard to teach, but it's just his ability to, to find opportunities where it doesn't appear to be one, but he creates them. Well, again, he's, he's always looking 
how does he get in his, his stick in position? Like, there are times you think where his body's at that he might not be in position, but he does a good job at getting his stick open. Um, he may be covered, but his stick is open, and he's got such a strong shot that he can shoot it off his back foot or um, front foot uh, off his knees that, um, I mean, the one he scored Saturday night, he's, he's kind of like a fadeaway jump shot uh, in basketball where he's, uh, he's moving the other direction and I just think he got off so quick that he surprised the goaltender. You know, it's been nice to see how the development of your defensive core has grown over the last, well, the first third of the season, really. And uh, see like Jacob Modry, for example, Noah Kim, a couple of guys that uh, they got big points over the weekend. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Um, I think Lee Mendelson's doing a great job with our decor right now. Uh, I think all eight of them are doing a nice job. They're, they're all getting better. And, um, you know, you're talking about Jacob Modry. Uh, I'll give you a tip. Don't go down the stairs after practice because he's running them. After every practice, he heads over to the stairs and he runs. He runs the stairs in that hallway coming up. That I don't know how many stairs there are. It seems like they're about fifty. But um, he's put a lot of time and effort in. That, um, like I said, his best hockey's definitely in front of him, and he's starting to catch up. His strength starting to catch up with that that big long body of his. Um, he's he's making nice strides. Uh, Alex um, Noah Kim, he's he's doing a nice job. He's he's doing a nice job. He's he's developing nicely, and I I think it really helps having the veteran uh, defensemen that are ahead of him that uh, do a good job leading by example. This coming week, it's one of those <clears throat> three games in a row. You got three on the road, and uh, you know it's it's the old typical trap situation where sometimes you can kind of get caught. You know, looking ahead too far, or, or maybe overlooking something. But we we've already learned pretty well that you can't look past anyone in this league. No, that's that's for sure. That um, again, uh, Coquitlam they jumped up and they got us the one time last year uh, that we weren't prepared. And um, we know going into their building that they're a much improved team from 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 a year ago. Uh, and we only play these teams twice. You know, they're out of division and. And you want to win the series with everybody. And, uh, and we, we want to get off, uh, get this road trip off on the right foot. That um, we know it's a, it's a smaller building, and um, you know we need to be ready to play there. I know that a lot of guys are probably looking forward to getting into Langley. That uh, Langley was one of our better rivals uh, the past couple of years. So I know sometimes when you're looking at Langley, you don't want to overlook anybody. And um, our job this week is to make sure that we don't do that. Well, and Langley's been off to a really good start here. Granted, the Wild had pretty good luck against them in the showcase, but uh, and maybe for Langley, maybe that sticks in their craw a little bit. So I'm sure they maybe have Friday circled on their calendar. I I think so. I I think that um, we've had a, a a good rivalry at times, a a little bit nasty rivalry at times. Um, but um, it, it's definitely one of our one of our rivals and. Um, you know, I think the, with a couple of negatives with going to the interior division, which it, there's so many positives. We, we're, we're so excited about being the interior division, but losing that rivalry that we had with, with Langley and Chilliwack, had, th those two places we had, I mean, especially Chilliwack, our, our rivalry with them was outstanding. And, you know, Langley was a good one too. So uh, I kind of miss, kind of miss, uh, the rivalry with those two teams right now, but um, so it's very important that uh, if you only play them twice, that you get off on the right foot. You know, getting away from the X's and O's of the game and just going back to sheer atmosphere and talking about in the the Wolves' den. It's year ten in the den. We've been celebrating that all year, and on Saturday night with the military appreciation night. Just talk about it. I mean, you've been around in a lot of buildings and a lot of places, but just talk about the atmosphere. It's simply what that brought, in, you know, to the from having the way the fans were interacting and just the whole night in general. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, there are people that talked about great, you know, as a outstanding hockey game, and you know, I think it is extremely competitive. That that's for sure. That uh, PG is a, a much improved club from the, from the past years, uh, but they play a they play a very defensive hockey game, and they generate a lot of their offense off of your turnovers and 
they, they did a great job in the first period, um, creating turnovers uh, in the neutral zone. We, we just did a poor job getting pucks behind them. Um, but from what I would say is, I think chances were 11 to 10 total. Uh, that it, Generally, there's quite a few more chances than that in a hockey game. So, But I thought with the atmosphere, I thought the atmosphere was outstanding. That um, uh, from the opening ceremonies, um, you know, to, to the end, I, I thought that uh, that the uh, um, swearing-in process with uh, the military I thought that was a cool thing, and the, uh, Prince George helping with the flag was a great thing. Um, you know, that was, that was a really class act by by Prince George. Um, help, help with that, standing every other every other guy uh, with us. I thought that was pretty neat on, on their part. And, the, all the the banners of the fallen soldiers, um, that boy, uh, if that doesn't tug at your heart, nothing will. Um, and then if you walked around before and the posters that were out, and it was just it was just a, a overall it was a, it was, a, it was, it was fun to be part of that atmosphere, and, um, and I'm, I'm proud of the office staff on, on uh, the event both nights, but but especially on on uh, Saturday night. The Wild are on the road this week, the three games in B.C., and then coming back home, three big games on the Thanksgiving holiday. Wednesday night, we'll be home against Vernon. Then you have the Thanksgiving holiday off. Then we have Chilliwack coming in on Black Friday. And on Saturday, it'll be the Salmon Arm Silverbacks in an interior division battle. So we'll look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks for tuning in this week. This has been Call of the Wild. Have a great week. You've been listening to Call of the Wild, the official weekly coaches show of the Wenatchee Wild, a presentation of the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network.